Welcome to part two of my series on how to play Commander. This time we're going to be looking at the defensive side in offensive mode. I've already made a video about the attacking side and if you haven't seen that, I would recommend you watch it first because I explained some basics that you will need to understand what I'm going to explain here. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is my least favorite game mode because I feel like as a commander, you can't have a huge impact in this game mode. You need a good team in order to win, and you can only provide them with the resources necessary to do so. But the command seat in this game mode often stays empty or is filled with someone who has no idea what he does, so this is a great game mode for people who want to learn how to play commander, to get used to the abilities, and usually your team is very thankful for having a commander that tries his best, that is communicating, and that is just friendly overall. I'm going to start by explaining in general how you defend properly. One of the most important aspects of the last video was that you shouldn't place offensive garrisons too close to the enemy strong point, because then they would get locked and no one could spawn on them. And this is already the most important point when you want to defend. You want to be present in as many areas around the strong point as possible, so that if an enemy manages to set up a garrison, that garrison is going to get locked because your teammates are nearby. Then they cannot spawn behind you, they can't flank you, and they only have one straight line of attack. New players usually tend to stick inside the strong point or very close to it. That's also completely fine. You need such players. But you also need players that patrol the area around the strong point, that identify the flanking routes and that try to show presence within these routes. There is no point in trying to direct your teammates to defend certain areas. Usually you don't even have enough teammates that actually listen to what you say and the game is too dynamic. You need players with a situational awareness that realize when a certain route could become a threat and when there could be enemies that are trying to set up garrisons. This is a feeling that you get just through experience. So you need experienced players that automatically search and defend certain routes. And you as commander can only provide them with the spawn points necessary to defend these areas. And this means you as commander are mainly focusing on setting up garrisons, providing your team with supply drops and driving the supply truck to get everything going. And just like in every other mode, the main question is where do I want my garrisons? And this is what we're going to be talking about now. First of all, let's talk about default garrisons. Default garrisons have some unique properties that make them very valuable. They cannot be destroyed by explosives and have to be dismantled manually. They also have only a 10 second spawn timer, meaning you can get on them way faster than on normal garrisons. And they don't contribute to the garrison limit. So you can have three default garrisons plus eight regular garrisons. And they don't have a 200 meter radius, so you can place a second garrison right next to your default garrison. You will also be surprised by how fast you're gonna hit the garrison limit. This is why you should only provide garrisons for the active and for the next sector. Don't set any garrisons up beyond that. This way, you can maximize the amount of useful garrisons on the battlefield. This brings up the question, where do I want my garrisons? And again, I'm going to show you at Omaha Beach an example, and I will talk you through the process of defending Omaha Beach to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions and exact locations where you want your garrisons. The first sector is usually easy to capture, and you shouldn't even try to set up a garrison over there because most often the enemy reaches that point before your teammates even get the chance. Your first job is to set up a second garrison inside the strong point. Ask your teammates if they have support players that could drop supplies there and if they don't have them, just drop your supplies 
inside the strong point and ask them to set the garrison up. And if they don't set it up, go there, set it up yourself. Once that is done, you're going to hop into a supply truck and start preparing the next sector. When you get your supplies back, you want to drop them close to the northern and southern default garrison and ask teammates to set up a garrison on them. If they don't do it, just leave the supplies where they are. You're going to focus on preparing the next sector. And when you're done with that, you go there and set up the garrisons yourself. The first garrison you set up with the supply truck is going into the next strong point. I know this is a controversial topic because some players say you shouldn't place your garrison inside the strong point. And for warfare, I 100% agree. But for this defensive mode, I feel like placing them inside the strong point works better than placing them around it. The second garrison is going to go to the closest alternative strong point. For every sector, you've got three possible strong points. One in the middle, one in the north, and one in the south. And you want to go to the closest alternative strong point and set up a garrison inside it. For this example, I would be going to the middle strong point and set up another garrison inside there. Here it depends a bit on what strong point you've got. If you've got a strong point in the north or in the south, I would recommend you go to the middle and set up another garrison in the middle. If your next strong point is the middle garrison, I would recommend you go north and south and set up both of these garrisons inside the alternative strong points. So you are using the supply truck to set up a garrison inside the next strong point and inside at least one of the alternative strong points. Then you're driving back towards the HQ and start refilling your truck. Before we continue, I would like to show you the most ideal garrison configuration that you want to achieve when you try to defend a strong point. You want to get one garrison inside the strong point and surround this by four more garrisons. Top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right of the strong point. The garrisons on the left side of the strong point should be placed in the upcoming sector. This gives you two advantages. First, if you lose the objective, you're going to keep these garrisons. And secondly, and this is actually the more important one, if an enemy tries to dismantle this garrison, they have the long timer. So it takes at least one minute to dismantle these garrisons and you will have enough time to react and try to stop them. Of course, this configuration always depends on the current strong point. If there is no cover, in a certain area, then it's not worth to set up a garrison over there. Here, for example, the bottom right of the strong point looks to be very open, at least by what the map says. There are no indicators that there might be any cover in this area, and the only possible cover would be that this dark spot is a wheat field. If it's a wheat field, put down your Gary in there. If there is no wheat field, don't even bother setting anything up because the enemy won't attack from this direction. So you are now coming back from the headquarters with the supply truck and you try to reach this ideal configuration. Use the supply truck and if no one requests supply drops, you can also use your supply drops to get this configuration going. If you manage to get this configuration before the enemy captures the current objective, you could spawn a half track at one of the headquarters and drive up the half track for the next objective. Don't put it right inside the strong point, but put it a bit further away. So if the enemy drops a bombing run and destroys your Gary inside the strong point, you can use the half track, get in the strong point and set up a garrison again. Once the enemy captured the objective, your team is falling back into the prepared sector and you will start preparing the next one. Again, you will start by setting up a garrison inside the next strong point using the supply truck. Then it depends on whether you have the middle objective or not. If you have the middle objective, set up a garrison on the northern and southern alternative objectives. And if you don't, just drive to the middle and set up a garrison there, just like I would do it here. 
Depending on the configuration you have for the current objective, you will be able to set up between two and three garrisons before you hit the limit. Set up as many as you can and then prepare the next ones. Preparing means make sure you've got supplies on ground so you can set up the garrisons as soon as you lose the current objective. Here I would want to place my garrisons like this, so I'm going to put down as many as I can and then I prepare the other ones. Here one of these garrisons is even placed inside the next strong point so you don't even have to set that up later on. Once the current sector is lost, your team is going to be retreating to the sector you've been preparing, but this time not every garrison is set up. So ask your teammates if they can help you to set up these garrisons, and if they don't do it, get yourself a supply truck or maybe even a jeep, drive to the supply drops and set up the garrisons on the drops. Once these garrisons are up, you will start preparing the last sector. Again. Start by setting up a garrison inside the strong point and then set up one or two garrisons on the alternative points. This time I would only set up a garrison in the middle. Then you will try to reach the ideal configuration again. Here I would want my garrison something like this. So I'm going to prepare the supplies as good as I can and wait for the current sector to fall. Once the objective falls, you fall back to the last objective, try to get up these garrisons as fast as you can with your teammates and then defend the last sector to the best of your possibilities. One thing I can suggest that may sound weird in the beginning is to place a garrison close to the headquarters near the strong point. This may sound a bit stupid because you've got the headquarters by which you want to carry there, but once the enemy starts capturing the objective, this headquarter is going to get locked and if you've got the Gary in this area, you can still use it and try to reach the strong point again. Placing your garrisons like this is going to maximize your chances of winning. But even if you lose, don't be disappointed. You definitely did a good job and your team is going to be thankful to have a commander that at least gave them the chance to put up a fight. Before I finish the video, I want to give you some tips on the other abilities again. The first one is going to be the strafing run. This ability is actually useful in this mode because if you have garrisons in the non-active sector and someone tries to dismantle it, it takes one minute. This is enough time to put a strafing run over it and kill the enemy that was trying to dismantle it. If you have the resources, it is completely fine to use the strafing run this way. Other abilities, like the bombing run, are not as important as in other modes, because usually you don't have large clusters of enemies that are attacking your strong point, so your bombing run is less effective. The only good way that you could use your bombing run is if your teammates spot an enemy airhead and they are unable to reach it in time. Then you should drop a bombing run over the airhead before the enemy gets the chance to spawn on it to prevent the enemy from getting behind your lines. The last tip is regarding reinforce. Reinforce increases the cap weight of friendly players inside the strong point. But you shouldn't use it right away when the enemy starts capturing your strong point. Wait until they capture it at least halfway through. The reinforce is going to work instantly, so even if you use it in the last second, it's going to have the same effect than when you used it from the beginning on. But oftentimes, you have friendlies that are currently moving back inside the strong point once they see that it starts getting contested, and they will defend it without the need of reinforce. Okay then, but this is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be working on the last video for warfare mode and I will drop that as soon as possible. Until then, I'm going to sign off. I wish you a great day and I hope I can see you in the next one.